noch zwei Vorträge. Wir hatten noch nicht Wasserstoff, beziehungsweise eben aber auch noch nicht die Brennstoffzelle. Und ich freue mich auf den Vortrag von Herrn Schleifenbaum, Robert Bosch Manufacturing Solutions GmbH von der Wasseraufbereitung zur Brennstoffzelle. Sondermaschinenbau für eine nachhaltige Zukunft. Ich kann mich noch erinnern, vor naja, ein paar Jahren, stimmt nicht, es ist schon ein bisschen länger her, ne? Brennstoffzellen, uh, gefährlich, gefährlich. Und heutzutage sagt man es, wo ist Ihr Problem? Ne? Die Bühne gehört Ihnen. Wir freuen uns auf Ihren Vortrag. Vielen Dank. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to talk to you here today about hydrogen-related technologies offered by Bosch Manufacturing Solutions. The production of green hydrogen in particular necessarily involves water purification. The consumption of the same, on the other hand, often is connected to the use of fuel cells. And since Bosch Manufacturing Solutions are offering technologies for both these subjects, I would like to focus on those in my talk today. The Bosch Group has set sustainability goals for 2025. We have this in all of our business sectors. For instance, we have the industry sector, we have um, the mobility sector, we have the sector of consumer goods, just to mention a few of them. And reaching these goals, these sustain sustainability goals, necessarily involves us to undergo a transformation into a future where our products for the end users, for individuals like you and me, where those products are green, they have a green footprint. But moreover, Bosch as a supplier of technology for OEMs, for industries, also offers their solutions in order for the industry to have um, an effective pathway into this new future. Our commitment from the Bosch management is very clear and it's very strong. So recently our chairman of the board of management, Dr. Stefan Hartung stated, we are stepping on the gas when it comes to green hydrogen. And why do we do this? Because the world has understood that our climate goals for the planet cannot be reached without the use of green hydrogen. So this is a desirable goal for us as a society, but of course, needless to say, for a company, they are also on the way to this goal business opportunities. And so what we are investing heavily as the Bosch Group, there's 1 billion euros of investment in the recent years for fuel cell in the mobility sector. There's half a billion euros for electrolyzer technologies, and there's another half a billion euro for stationary fuel cell applications. And so um, our company is seriously investing into hydrogen technologies in general. And where does this all happen? You can see on this map of the hydrogen value chain. I really like this map because it shows the vast po possibilities that we have all together as companies to get involved in projects for the production of green hydrogen, but also get involved into those markets where the hydrogen is being consumed. So you see a symbol, a Bosch symbol everywhere where there's a, a product entering the market um, as announced of today. Beyond, there's more activities going on with possible future entries. We have marked in blue where Bosch Manufacturing Solutions, which is a fully integrated part of the Bosch Group, are focusing on. And I would like to stress those topics today. You see on the left-hand side of this map, you see the production of hydrogen using renewable energies, so solar power, offshore wind power, onshore wind power. And it happens to be the way on our planet 
that where these types of energies are abundant, there is no clean water. Yeah, so often offshore or it is in desert areas, you find saline water in general. And so wherever you apply an electrolyzer, then it needs to be accompanied with a reason with an effective and well-performing water purification method. And I will turn to this later in more detail. Also the electrolyzer, I would like to point out, um, the Bosch group um, are entering the market with electrolysis components, and I will show you later where you can find our colleagues in the other hall. Now, that's the production of green hydrogen on the left-hand side. Let's turn to the right-hand side where the hydrogen is being consumed. We have, as the Bosch group, in the market fuel cells. Fuel cells, on the one hand, based on the PEM technology, so proton exchange membrane technology. These are for the mobility sectors. And we are bringing to the market here fuel cell systems, stacks, components. And um, on the other side, we also have for the stationary energy supply, the decentralized energy supply, we have solid oxide fuel cells. Those are, for instance, used in data centers. And many more um, products that you see here. Just to mention one more um, from the Bosch Home Comfort Group, we also have um, hydrogen-ready boilers. So you can use a heater with hydrogen in order to keep our homes warm in the winter. And this is a formidable task for us as a as a Bosch group, but also as the whole society to go undergo to this, um, this transformation into a green future. However, it comes with economical challenges, for sure. Today, products are quite expensive. And how can we bring the cost down into those proclaimed corridors where the business cases make sense in the long run? and without public subsidies. Now, this question brings us um, to the economies of scale that we expect, and as we have seen them for other technologies in the past. We know that a, a steep decline of cost throughout time can only be reached if you employ in production advanced equipment and if you employ automation solutions. And Bosch manufacturing solutions are offering a portfolio, an advanced portfolio for such strategy. So if you are an electrolyzer OEM or if you are a, um, have fuel cells in your, in your portfolio, you can contact us to bring into the game the advanced production equipment and automation solutions. One example, the fuel cell. So the fuel cell, first of all, of course, it needs an advanced, advanced technology in the production. What you see here then is after the production, you need, um, you need testing technology. So these fuel cell testers we develop for um, the development process of, um, of the fuel cell itself. We develop them for um, end-of-line testing, and you also can have them for endurance tests, so lifetime testing. And you see here on the top picture, um, two of our colleagues um, that are operating a um, fuel cell tester for the, um, that is meant for the mobility sector. So these are the, the so-called fuel cell power modules, and you find them in fuel cell electric vehicles. On the bottom, you see a tester of the um, solid oxide fuel cell, which I mentioned before. These are for decentralized energy supply. And Bosch Manufacturing Solutions are offering, on the one hand side, number one, the assembly technology. So you will find from us whole assembly lines for the SOFC or the PEMFC system. You will find testing technology. So, for example, an end-of-line stack tester, leakage testing. I will show a picture in a while. 
and you also find process engineering. You will find process technologies such as coating and welding of bipolar plate, such that these products have a reliable and long lifetime. Assembly. Now we have fuel cell power modules in the market. You see those big guys here on the right hand side. They are of the size of a cubic meter. They can be placed in these um, fuel cell trucks by Nikola, for example. And they weigh 600 kilograms. They have um, thousands of parts and it takes hundreds of steps in order to assemble them. So we have an assembly line and we have prepared this for our partner Nicola um, to, be, to be producing um, them on site. Now, on the top left, you see in the picture the so-called anode pre-assembly. So the anode side of this fuel cell power module is here assembled. And you see this yellowish crane, which is a lifting aid for the worker in order to be able to place the next component onto this anode pre-assembly. There's also what you see in the back, um, a screen, a bluish screen, which is our um, operator guidance system, and it has a pick-to-light um, method in order for the, to instruct the worker, worker how to pick the next part correctly uh, and how to do this very efficiently. Now, this is meant to bring this assembly process down in cycle time and to bring it down in failure probability. So meaning our product will be done faster and with a higher quality. Also on the bottom left, you see this anode pre-assembly. You see here this um, chamber where a high voltage test is being performed. Again, accompanied on the right, um, to the right of it um, with the operator guidance system. And the anode is then assembled together with a cathode side um, in the so-called main assembly. This is the picture on the top right. You see here everything mounted together in our line, and then the fuel cell power module is prepared. Prepared for what? Afterwards, we need to test it. We need to make functional tests. We need to make leakage testing. You see this chamber here on the bottom right. Um, this is a chamber where we perform um, tests in order to find out whether the tightness of the system is ensured. Now, the Bosch manufacturing, Bosch manufacturing solutions are offering the full portfolio of testing equipment. So this includes functional tests for fuel cell power modules, leakage testing, and it includes the endurance testing. On the left back block is seen that um, we are testing up to 400 kilowatt systems. So that's the entire fuel cell power module but we can also apply just reduced systems with only part of it. Um, you mentioned, we, here's mentioned the electrical air compressor and the hydrogen gas injector. And we have a communication between the test bench and the fuel cell control device. This means um, that we can trigger special operational points such as a frost start or such as dynamic change in the humidity of the process gases. So everything can be, can be set in a very realistic environment in order to make a full functional test. The second thing is that is shown here is the leakage testing. And um, this testing has been developed in-house and uh, tailored to this application. It is um, helium testing. In a, in a quite a large chamber. This is challenging if you want to test for leakage rate and you have a large chamber and this leakage rates that we can go down to are 10 to the minus five millibar times liters per second. And this is quite an achievement. We also have lifetime containers. You see on the right picture here, and those are quite large containers, about 14 meters long. And inside you will find three times, a f no, four times a 300 kilowatt system. So all in all, you can consider this is a small power plant, so to say. So a lot of electricity power coming out and this can be fed back into the grid in our setup. 
so it can be used efficiently. And those lifetime containers we have been applied since a long time. We have very good experience with this. So coming back to the map, we were now on the right-hand side with the consumption of the hydrogen. And let's now say, where does the hydrogen come from? Well, we must produce it. And of course, on the left-hand side, as described before, um, we have the electrolysis paired with water purification. Now, if you think of this whole hydrogen value chain really as a chain made of links, then the very first link is the water purification. Without the availability of ultra-pure water where you want to produce the hydrogen, you will not make the hydrogen. So if the first link breaks for some reason, the whole chain breaks. So we have to focus on providing reliable technology here. There are many ways of hydrogen producing um, projects. One very innovative way, which is also presented here on the mess and uh, on the sorry on the trade fair, uh, and this is a this is a um, project that involves offshore green hydrogen production. This is a very innovative concept because in, in such a scenario, the wind turbines are not connected anymore by electrical grids, such as is, is conventional. However, the wind turbine provides the energy in order to turn seawater after purification into hydrogen and then transport the gas away from the wind turbine. This way is known that um, we get lots of savings in, in the capex because the electrical grid can be dropped and also expensive um, subsystems. And also it is, it is faster to realize such projects because the approval process for such a project is immense and with such a um, simplification where you have uh, not so many electricity cables um, under the ocean um, is, is faster to realize. Anyway, such innovative and exciting solution places challenges, of course. And water purification is a quite established technology for the use cases where it has been established. However, when you transfer this to a new scenario for this one here, far away in a remote location, we are facing challenges. And those are that we want to place there a technology that uses no chemicals, because what is the use of producing green hydrogen then poisoning the oceans? We don't want that, so no chemicals. Secondly, we want to have a solution that is robust. Robust in this setup where energy is intermittent, start-stop behavior of the wind, and water quality is also fluctuating. So this rough um, environment needs to be able to handled by the water purification solution. And thirdly, this is very easy to understand that um, low maintenance is a must. Uh, so our solution must have at the most once a year a maintenance because trips out to this wind turbine are expensive and time consuming. So those um, use cases you find offshore, these, we call these island mode use cases. So every wind turbine is like its own island and produces hydrogen. But you also find similar scenarios in other areas of the world where you find lots of wind, uh, as areas in Africa or southern, um, southern America. And there, also, it's hard to get to. You so have only saline water. So the challenges of saline water intermittency, serviceability, and sustainability are similar. So um, this calls for a new technology. Let me pause here for one second and, and, and ask, ask ourselves, um, so we're using lots of water. If we set up gigawatts of elect electrolysis capacity, 
is this somehow a trouble for water scarces, scarcity on our planet? It's an interesting question because um, we all know that water scarcity is, is one of our biggest challenges of the humanity. And now if we set up this new technology of providing hydrogen as an energy carrier, we might wonder, is this a challenge for the available water on the planet? Well, there's a, a very simple answer to this, but then it gets more complicated as usual. So the simple answer is if you look at this globally, these are really small amounts of water that we're talking about. If you sum it up and you compare this industry of, of hydrogen production to, for example, the agriculture industry, we need much less water. So no worries there. However, when you look at it locally and you look at the areas where you exactly need the hydrogen to be produced, we do have a problem. We will find... Um, areas in the world where there is no available water, at least not for the use of hydrogen, and then we have a challenge in order not to waste this valuable resource. So for example, in, in Africa, where there's many projects being started for green hydrogen production, it is, it is required legally um, that the water must not be used the fresh water resources must, must not be used for such um, hydrogen production where it's needed by the people um, for, for drinking use. So another challenge um, for water purification. Now, there's well-known established water purification technology. However, um, the state-of-the-art type um, has its challenges with the uh, um, with the requirements that I mentioned. So we're proposing a different technology and um, we have here a setup that I'm describing um, to turn seawater or also brackish water into ultra-pure water to pass it on to an electrolyzer. This technology, um, it's hard, is given by mechanical vapor compression distillation so it's a distillation technology where you evaporate and condense water, but it's being done in a clever way such that um, it is not energy consuming so much because the latent heat um, of the evaporation is recuperated in this process. So steam is being produced. It is compressed the steam by a um, steam compressor and the condensation happens on an elevated temperature level such that the latent heat can be won back by heat exchange. So distillation technology, which was very robust, it has, does not involve any filter media and uh, so hence is also um, has low maintenance in this way. We need to make sure that no scaling occurs in this um, process. Um, so in our concept, we have electrical chemical pretreatment, which avo avoids the occurrence of scaling. And the water that comes out need to be polished afterwards because electrolyzers need really ultra pure water in order to guarantee a long lifetime. So this is measured here in the electrical conductivity. We need to bring it down to 0.1 microsiemens per centimeter. What comes out of this MVCD part is about five microsiemens per centimeter, and then the water polisher, an electrodeionization unit, brings it down to 0.1 microsiemens per centimeter. Now, such combination um, does not exist on the market yet today, this combination that I'm showing here, but we are introducing this into market. I'll show you some more details about it. Now here you see um, a peek into our um, device. Um, this is the part of the electrodeionization unit. And we can guarantee with, this, um, with the tests that we have made on our prototype that this has very little maintenance requirements. It works very robustly. It is very sustainable in the sense that we, we need no chemicals in this entire process, no added chemicals. And thirdly, 
it is very ready, very dynamic behavior um, towards intermittency. So we have performed tests, real-time tests that are um, simulating the behavior of a wind turbine, for example, so start and stop behavior. And such products um, we encapsulate in containers. This is um, prepared um, by us on, on site so that we, we have inside this desalination unit and the water polishing unit all together. You can feed this container with flexible input water. This can be saline water in the sense of seawater or brackish water. And what you get out is ultra pure water. We are preparing these systems for electrolysis to be applied with um, electrolysis of one megawatt, of five megawatt and 15 megawatt systems. And we place our water purification devices in up to 40 foot um, length containers. Now, we have today very promising and very positive um, long-term tests of our prototype available and we intend to enter the market um, as 2025. We will guarantee for the electrolyzer very clean water, very robustly clean water of 0.1 microsiemens per centimeter. And the entire process is very low in the energy consumption, meaning that if you express the energy consumption specific to a kilogram of hydrogen to be produced with water, you need for the water purification 0.2 kilowatt hours. Now this is a small number if you compare this to the energy that an electrolyzer needs in order to then process this water into hydrogen and oxygen. That's about 60 or maybe 50 kilowatt hours. So here we're talking about less than half a percent of the energy needed by a water purifier compared to the electrolysis counterpart. So in our point of view, the energy question is here not the most interesting one, but we point to our USPs of no chemical use, of um, low maintenance and the high intermittency readiness. That's, in our opinion, the important part for these innovative solutions of green hydrogen productions to work. So let me wrap up with saying that at the moment we're looking into collaborations. And um, please come to me, come to my colleagues, which, which are here um, after the talk, or you can also contact us um, via this email address. And I would like to close with, with um, pointing to our colleagues in Hall 13 from the Bosch Group. And they are presenting their electrolysis components and they're presenting fuel cell technologies. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Schleifenbaum, for this very intriguing presentation. I wasn't aware, indeed, that, that uh, this can be used for one of the most valuable substances on Earth, namely water, yeah, uh, which will become even more important if someone listens to, to the global uh, organizations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have now the opportunity to ask questions to Mr. Schleifenbaum. So, while you think about your questions, I received the questions via web. What kind of electrolysis technologies do you deploy in, I would say, not these remote, but remote locations? Right. So the Bosch Group um, are providing electrolysis components such as stacks and smart modules for um, projects in the world where green hydrogen will be produced, especially in remote locations. This would include our technology, um, which is the PEM-based technology. We believe the PEM-based technology in connection with, with the intermittent energy start-stop is the most suitable due to its um, dynamic behavior. Thank you very much. Are there further questions? You have now the opportunity.
okay, we can visit you at uh, your booth, so to say, uh, but now would be the opportunity I'm taking a look at the stream. So, again, thank you very much, Mr. Schleifenbaum, for being here, and we are looking forward to maybe see you next year here with the next news. So, thank you very much.